Yo, what up? Welcome to Mopox and No Problem. I'm Jose Maria Jr. And I am joined today with uh, Ruben from Through the Ropes. What up, Ruben? What's up? Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you for joining. And also joining us today is TJ from the Boxing Syndicate. What up, TJ? How you doing? And good. It's, it's great to have you know, both of you guys here to discuss the Triple G versus Rio de Marota fight. Um, I know we all woke up early for that one. TJ, you're probably eating breakfast, and Ruben and I are probably still <laughs> still in bed because it's like 5 a.m. our time over here. Um, but what do you guys think of the fight? I thought it was cool. I mean, uh, Morata actually looked pretty good through, like, round one through four, one, round one through five. You know what I mean? He's actually rolling with him. And then, obviously, through the second half of the fight, you know, Triple G just, you know, started to show his, you know, what he got. You know, he had really good stamina. He just, you know, he was in really good shape. I just thought he kind of like, you know, he showed who he was at the end, you know, through the last bit of the fight. So I wasn't really surprised yeah. by the outcome. Uh, absolutely, I, I would agree. It was a a fight, like basically a, a fight of two sides. So you do have the one through five fight, which was very competitive. You know, Murata I think hurt Triple G in the second round with the body shot. Um, and oh shit, did Ruben freeze? No, Ken, I'm I'm here. I'm here. Oh shit! Oh shit! Because yeah, your first one. Never mind. Um, and then like after the sixth round on, like Triple G just just started like coming to his own, and it was like reminiscent of prime Triple G, mm-hmm. and you know yeah. just took over. Like that's what like from like uh, uh, TJ said like from like uh, one through five. Uh, I, I was like, oh man, I think uh, Mar- uh, Ryota Morata might actually pull it off. Triple G might start showing his age, but even throughout like those rounds, like. Triple G was was landing his that like that bazooka jab that he has like mm-hmm. the whole fight yeah. you know, like Ryota had his moments for sure but like there was always a jab a jab and there was some good combinations too where I, I know like uh, Triple G was landing like he'll uppercut and then he'd go to the body too so maybe that's what was uh, slowing you know body punching's kind of an investment for those later rounds and I think that's what possibly might have stopped a. Uh, or slow down uh, Murata to get that uh, that stoppage for Triple G. Yeah, I think, I think that's what happened. Uh, in this fight, too, like, I, I watched it without the sound off because it was, it was 5 a.m. and <laughs> wife was sleeping, two-year-old was sleeping, so I was like, all right, I, I got no headphones nearby. I'm just going to watch it without the sound. And it was super interesting to watch without no sound because like, there was no bias from the commentators. There's no bias from the crowd. Um, but you could see... You know, those punches being landed, and it seemed like Triple G was landing the harder punches. So I was like, he still has his power; he hasn't lost it. Like they say, it's the last thing to go, um, and and he's and still there. Right, and like you said about the crowd, like uh, with it being in Japan, they were like getting really excited with anything uh, Murata landed. They were, you know, getting excited about. It. But like, <laughs> I bet. Yeah, but I mean, like you said, it was. I mean, I thought it was a good fight. Uh, Murata is not that bad of a fighter, actually. I mean, to, like you said, until it got to the point where he got knocked out. I mean, he was rolling with him. But I mean, Triple G still looks good, and I think if he actually gets that uh, Canelo fight, I mean, I got Canelo, but I think he. Uh, <laughs> see, I think he won't. I, mean, I mean, I think he's gonna look good. I don't think he's gonna be in there. I don't think he's gonna show his age. Basically, is what I'm saying. I think, uh, for, for sure, man. Yeah, if, if Triple G fights Canelo, I got Canelo too. But I honestly think, like, after seeing that performance, I think, like, I think Triple G should just stay in 160 and try to try to undispute. I mean, I mean, have uh, Boo Boo and uh, Charlo go at it, and then the winner gets Triple G. And I think, you know, that would be a great legacy fight for Triple G. I mean, and if he were to win... Yeah, I mean, he's still going to get a big uh, payday if he fights Canelo. I mean, he obviously, if he fights Canelo, he's going to get a bigger payday, and I, and that's probably what he yeah. wants him finish business. But, I mean, let's be honest. I feel like I feel like Canelo stops Triple G now. How do, how do you guys think about that? I, th- I think so, too. I think that trilogy fights simmer too long, and Canelo, he's 32. You know, he's, he's, he's still in his prime years, and, and he's going to be the bigger fighter now, like 175 going down to 168, whereas Triple G is going to be moving up and wait for the first time in his career. Like, how is he going to handle those eight extra pounds? Um, we've saw we've seen him be hurt to the body now. Dobrochenko hurt him to the body. We, we saw Murata hurt him to the body. Canelo is a, a killer when it comes to throwing those body shots. Like, if it takes Triple G five rounds to warm up, that may be too late already because Canelo's going to be like investing early to the body, 
and may even stop Triple G. I see, yeah, and, I see that one playing uh, out. Morata did. Uh, Ryota Morata did not, doesn't have the head movement that Canelo has. So I mean, who knows? Who's going to be able to be that landing that jab too? So I think I think it's, yeah yeah. Me personally, I think and I'd rather see him try to undispute than fight Canelo. But that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. No, I, would no I, I agree. I agree. I, I think, I mean, he's he's still making 160 pounds comfortably. So as, as far as, like, what's next for Triple G, you know, it, it's obviously it's Canelo if he beats Bibble because that fight's signed, sealed, and delivered. It's just Canelo has to beat Bibble now. But I feel like, hypothetically speaking, go ahead. Well, I was going to, sorry to cut you off. I feel like if Canelo, mm-hmm. if you were to win or lose, a Triple G fight's still good for him. I mean, if if he beats, if he yeah. loses to Bibble, he could go down beat Triple G and start getting momentum again. Absolutely. And that's what, that's what I don't know, like, because Canelo signed a two-fight deal, and I don't know what the stipulations are. Like, did he, did he does he need to beat Vivo to fight Triple G, or can he still choose to fight Triple G even if he comes up a loss? I, it depends, I guess, what the zone wants. That fight's still marketable even if Canelo loses against Vivo. Okay. But to your, to your point, like, Triple J at 160, he'll have that Charlo fight, um, you know, WBL seems to be opening up because Boo Boo's moving up to 168. So you're going to have the, you know, the WBL belt basically. Is he going to be a new champion? You may go after the new champion. It, it, it's still TBD. So I know he's he's moving up to fight Zach Parker for the interim 168 pound belt. And if he wins that, he has to tell the WBO if he's staying at 168 and moving back down to defend 160. So okay. TBD, but that could be another like felt that Triple G goes before he targets Charlo and, and ends his career on a high note. Yeah, um, un, undisputed 160 would be huge. No, for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, think I definitely agree with that, too. I mean, why go up and fight Canelo? Oh, I mean, you know what I mean? If it's, especially if, it, if Canelo loses. I mean, I mean, it really doesn't. Like you said, it, it makes sense for him to just fight him then. But, I mean, at this point, you might as well just try to undispute. At that point, you're at the end of your career. What more can you do? At the, you know, I mean, you only have the one loss. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's all I see in Triple G's future. Is just he needs to target the champions and win sixty or that Canelo trilogy. What do you guys but, think about uh, a Mungia with Triple G? That, that wouldn't be a bad fight either because the, they got that unfinished business from that fight that never happened at one you know, when Mungia was a one fifty four pounder. Um, that may be more competitive now. Like Mungia has has shown, like he can take a punch or two. Yeah. So can he hurt? Can he hurt Triple G? Is to be the question. Yeah, and I think it's about. Yeah, and I think it's time that uh, Mungia kind of steps up his competition too. I saw something that he might that he might fight Danny Jacobs. I mean, that's a good name, but I feel like Danny Jacobs passed his passed his time. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's typical Golden Boy because Mungia has <laughs> been the WBO mandatory for the longest. <laughs> and now he's like, oh, uh, Danny Jacobs had a catch with 164 pounds seems more attractive than the, the title shot. Yeah. You know, doesn't make sense. Yeah. What about uh, Ryota Murata? You know, I, I do know he, he lost, but he gave up a, a good showing. You know, I, I think he earned a lot of new fans that hadn't watched him fight. And I think he, he has a few more big fights left for him. Yeah. Where do you guys want to see him fight? If he want to take some of those fights, like even if he wants to take a a Jamie Munguia, you know how Golden Boy works. You know what I mean? If he wants to mm-hmm. take one of those, and not, you know, they don't want to give Munguia a giant fight like Triple G. Why not take you know who put up a good point if he has them? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Also. Yeah, that's a good I think quickly as well. That's a very good point that TJ brings up. I mean, the Amungia versus a Murata fight just to kind of test the waters, you know, see right. Triple G was able, uh, old Triple G was able to do that to him. So what can, uh, exactly. let's say, uh, quote unquote, pro- going into his prime, uh, Mungia, what can he do? Yeah, great, great points. I think a, a lot of fighters might use that as the benchmark now to test themselves. Like, well, I'm going to see if I can handle him better than Triple G did. Right. You know, I was actually, you know, like, like, I was actually <laughs> talking to one of my buddies too because he's he's actually the one that woke me up to watch the Triple G fight. Um, uh-huh. uh, shout outs to Mac if you're watching, but um, he uh, he said, um, "What about uh, Murata and Charlo?" Yeah, I can see Charlo wanting that fight 
just coming off the prestige of the Triple G performance, if he can I mean, finish better, him earlier, it's better than that's like, a message. It's better what he's fighting than who he's well, fighting yeah, right like, now. I think Selecki. I think Selecki. Yeah, I think he's – Selecki moved up. He's like a 154-pounder, so – not a good look, man. I think I had a few for a great payday, <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I was thinking, um, what about Aries Landi Lara? Okay. He's still out there. Yeah, yeah the American Dream. Yeah, American Dream could be on there. Um, uh, Carlos Adames, who you know beat Debrachenko in his last fight, that could be another good fight. Liam, oh, it's Liam Smith. He's in the mix, right? He's still, he's still, yeah. he's still ranked on the top ten, right? In one hundred and sixty. Yeah, yeah, and, and also one of my favorite fighters out of the UK, Chris Eubank. Oh, oh yeah, Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know he's currently negotiating a fight against Kel Brook at a catchweight, it seems. But man, it would be much better if he just skips Kel Brook and goes to Murata, you know, stationed in the UK or Japan somewhere. That's, that's a big money fight. That'd be big for UK, they'd probably love that over there, so. That's probably not true. That's gonna that's gonna send a sell out a stadium somewhere. Yeah, they probably love <laughs> that over there. That's probably what he'd take. Sweet man. Well, that's, that's all the thoughts that I had on Triple G Murata. You know, think Triple G show that he still has has a lot left in him. Um, we all kind of think that if he fights Canelo, it's it's gonna be a wrap. But it's boxing. Anything can happen. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if he fights, I feel like if he's a uh, if he fights Canelo, he's kind of digging his own grave. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I just I don't want to say pushing himself back, but you know what a loss could do to you. You know you'll be right back in the you know growing portion of a you know a career again. You got to try to work your way back, and he's already at the end of it. So it's like, yeah, I, I, I'm sarcastic and telling one of my friends that he should fight Amir Khan, Triple G Amir Khan, <laughs> as as a retirement fight ends on a high note. <laughs> that's what, what yeah. you did. <laughs> KO first round. Yeah, exactly, man. That's gonna that's gonna go viral. <laughs> All right, well, before we wrap up, uh, Ruben, why don't you tell people where they can find you? You can find me on Instagram and, and YouTube on uh, through the ropes, and no, it's through underscore ropes underscore. No, I said that all wrong, but you you'll, you'll put you'll put the link in there. <laughs> I will. I got you. I got you. <laughs> What about you, TJ? Where can people find you? No, you guys can find me on Instagram at uh, the Boxing Syndicate, and then um, I have all my information there. And I got a YouTube coming up too. Uh, well, I dropped a couple of episodes on the uh, YouTube, and it's called uh, Boxing Unfiltered. Perfect. Well, again, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, let's do it again real soon. Let's talk some more boxing. Of course. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. All right, later, guys. Later.